Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number 76. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Business 210 Chapter 8, or our PDFs, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about how to estimate a population proportion uh, by building a confidence interval. Here's our formula, and it looks very similar to the formulas we used for sigma known and sigma not known when we use the z and t distribution. Here we're going to use the z distribution, our normal norm.s inverse functions, for example. We're going to have a sample p, a sample proportion, called p bar, plus or minus some margin of error. Now we've seen the z al uh, sub alpha divided by 2. That's our upper z times, and there's our uh, standard error, square root of p bar times 1 minus p bar divided by n. So this is the formula we're going to use for building our confidence interval to estimate our population proportion. Let's go over to Excel. All right, so here's our uh, example. A large Seattle coffee company says that Excel skills are important for the 600 plus employees that work in the marketing and accounting department. A sample of potential employees who said they were knowledgeable with Excel as below. So what they did is they went out and they asked potential employees, are you knowledgeable? Now notice, the employee is answering either yes or no. So let's think about this. This is a binomial experiment, right? Two no, there's, this is a nominal variable, and there's two possibilities. Now in order to do use the normal distribution, we have to make sure and check that our binomial tests are met. And there are four of them. Experiment consists of sequential and identical trials. So in essence, fixed number of identical trials. Yes, that's true. Two outcomes, uh, identical on each trial. E there's a, each trial only results in a success or failure. So they either answer yes, they, are not, they say they're knowledgeable in Excel, or no, they're not. And you can imagine that this is a question on a um, some document that they're submitting as a potential employee, right? Because they, they want to know if you're going to work in the marketing account, you better uh, be good with Excel. And you know this would probably be a first step. Then once you say yes, maybe you get uh, an interview or a test. All right, so yes, there's a success or failure on each trial. Probability of success, yeah, you can either get a yes or a no, so that's the same each time. The trials are independent, so each um, person, potential employee is not affecting the uh, next, we'll say yes. So all the tests are met. Now, one, two, three, four, there is actually one further test. And uh, over in the PDFs, I have that. And actually, in past chapters, we did this too. We're going to have to check whether n times p is greater than 5 and n times 1 minus p is greater than 5. If both of those are true, then we're, we can use the normal. All right, here's our data set here. I'm going to Control Shift Down Arrow. So there's, wow, calculate our sample size. So it equals count. Now count counts numbers, and count a uh, counts non-empty cells. And since we have words here, we want to count how many uh, cells have uh, words in them. So we use count a. Uh. So 1,000. All right, now we have to count yes and count no. Our success will be yes. We use the count if. So don't count all of them like count a uh did, but count only some of them. So we give it the range. Uh, I'm going to hit the F4 key just because it jumps the screen back up. It locks it. We don't need to. Oh, yes, we do need to lock it because we're going to copy it down. Notice the range, there it is, comma, and then the criteria. Now I set no here and yes right there. I can't quite click on it, so I'm going to use my arrow key to go one cell to the left. All right, that'll count what? The yeses. Control Enter, there we have it. All right, now the probability, we have our total number in the sample, our number of successes, so we'll do equals the number of people that responded yes divided by the sample size. Now I'm going to lock this with the F4 key so I can copy this down. The blue box is on the yes. When I copy it down, the blue box will move down to no. All right, 
So 32% of these people have the potential of getting an interview or whatever it is this company is going to do with this. That's the sample proportion. It's our po point estimate. It's the best estimate we have of our population parameter. We'll call this p-bar. And this is the proportion of potential employee employees who say they know Excel well. Now let's test uh, to see if we can use the normal distribution equals sample size times our p. And um, I'm going to lock this, F4, because the green box is p. This one down here is 1 minus p. So in both cases, we're greater than 5. We can use the standard normal curve. All right, let's. Uh, Calculate, we'll do a confidence interval of 95. We'll say equals 1 minus confidence interval or confidence level to give us our alpha. Alpha divided by 2, just as we've done so many times so far in this chapter. That's the uh, risk on the upper end. We'll calculate our z on the upper end. And we can use equals norm. There's norm dot inverse, but norm s inverse gives us the z. Now the probability, we need all the probability minus the little bit on the upper end. So we'll say 1 minus. So there's our upper 1.96 approximately. Our standard error, we have our formula right here. Um, we saw it over in the PDFs. p times 1 minus p divided by n. So I'm going to get uh, the p all in the square root. The p times 1 minus divided by our n. Now the order of operations will work fine here, because the multiplication will be done first, and then the division. And we get 0 0.014. All right, so that's our standard error. Now our margin of error. We're going to say z times the standard error. And there we have our margin of error. That's the amount to add on either side of our p bar right here. So the lower limit, I'm going to subtract, equals the upper limit. So we have our p bar plus our margin of error. OK, so now we have an estimate, our conclusion. The 95% confidence interval for, for the proportion of potential employees who say they know Excel well is 0.2942 to 0.34. So about almost 30% to almost 35. So 30 to 35%. Somewhere in that interval, we're estimating at 95% confidence that our population proportion exists. Now let's go look at a second example. Let's go over to p-bar 2. So here's our second example. Furniture Land South surveyed their customers n equals 600. That was a sample size. To see if they like the new line of durable foam furniture decorated in bright colors. 414 said they were excited about the new line. All the binomial tests are met. All right, so our variables, we have x number of successes. That is, we like it. Sample size 600. So we can figure out the p bar for our sample proportion of the number of uh, people that said they liked it. 414 divided by our n, 0 0.69. So our sample proportion is the best estimate for the population proportion, right? And so the, the owner of Furniture Land is saying, well, hey, that's pretty good. Maybe this is a potential uh, product we can launch. All right, now let's come down here. We have our uh, p bar up here. Level of confidence, let's do 0.99. We want to be really sure, have 1% risk, that alpha, so 1 minus that. So alpha divided by 2, a half a percent, or 0 0.005, so that divided by 2. Our z, we're going to do not norm as it there. It's norm 
dot s dot um, inverse. Without the dots is the function used in earlier uh, versions. So norm dot s. Now our not dist inverse. So inverse wants a probability. Now notice this is a teeny little bit of risk on the upper end. So I'm going to say 1 minus that. All these uh, probability functions go from negative infinity up to whatever uh, x bar or probability marker. So there we go. So 2.57, that's our z. So our standard error, we'll go ahead and do that same square root. We have p and times, and here we're going to have to uh, solve for 1 minus, because in the last example we had it, but here we don't. So 1 minus that divided by our count, which is 600. So 0 0.018, our margin of error. We'll take our standard error times our z equals this times that. Now we have our margin of error. We just simply take our p bar, subtract the margin of error. Take our p bar and add the margin of error. OK, so we have two values, a lower and an upper, that span an interval where we're 99% sure that our population proportion exists. So the owner could be 99% sure that the population proportion percentage of customers is excited about the new product is between about 64 and about uh, 70 four percent. The margin of error is about five percent, right? So there's a, a margin of error. Uh, so pretty good proportion of customers that are excited. And so then the owner says, well, hey, uh, maybe we should launch this product. All right, so two examples in this video of estimating the population proportion based on sample data. Um, OK, we'll see you next video. We have one more topic in this chapter, determining sample size. See you next video.